Troy moved silently through the crowd, listening and speaking only when necessary. As he moved further along, the night began to make him feel more uneasy. Something was wrong. Like a tingling sensation just before an electrocution, the dampness before a storm. He glanced at the door a few times, deciding that if he could, he would start to edge closer. But just as he was beginning to slip towards the back, the house began to grow quiet, as men all turned to face the stage. Oscar Hostetter stepped up and held up his hand in a formal wave to all the men there, or perhaps it was just a sloppy Nazi salute. Good evening, sons of the fatherland. We gather tonight in a very special circumstance. Tonight, we welcome a very special visitor. At long last, our brothers across the sea have decided to let us in on the full operation they have for us. Allow me to formally introduce Herr Eimrich Kruger. The man who stepped up to meet the roaring applause was a thin and pasty fellow with a crooked eyebrow and a black suit on. He had a balding head with graying sideburns, and he had his right eye slightly narrowed, his nose locked in a strange sneer. His left hand held a book, and his right hand held a cane of some kind with a vulture's head on the top. He leaned on it slightly with one leg slightly off, the result of a combat injury perhaps? But whatever the case, Troy was speechless at the name. Eimrich Kruger wasn't just some ordinary Nazi. He was in Hitler's inner circle. While not a general himself, Kruger had retired from military work after the Great War, and it had nearly cost him his life. As Hitler began his marches across Europe, Kruger had come out of retirement not to march into battle, but to be an advisor. He was trusted, he had resources, but more importantly, he was exceptionally dangerous. Troy had to get some evidence of Kruger actually being here, in America. How, though? The only thing he could think of to do was to slip out, but if he did, he might miss something important. All he could do was stand and applaud along as the men hollered and roared their approval of the vain-looking fellow. Guten Abend, he announced formally, and he then coughed. For those unfamiliar with the tongue of our country, I suggest you learn it soon. The world will be speaking it within the decade. There was another cheer at the order. No one dared admit they didn't understand. Troy didn't care what he'd said. All he took from that was Kruger spoke English very well. Only the slightest hint of an accent. He was clearly well educated. Our glorious Führer is aware of the good work you have done in the name of the Third Reich. And has at last decided it is time for you to prove your merit. American-born, many of you are, but German blood flows through your veins. Pure blood. Blood of the race to conquer all the world. The men were hyped and stamping their feet, but it was all rhetoric. The disgusted sneer that Kruger was trying to mask told Troy that this pompous windbag would rather be anywhere but here among a bunch of drunken fools. Troy almost forgot to look excited for a moment and returned to his cheering. When all had settled down again, Kruger stepped forward and cleared his throat. As the Führer furthers his plans for Europe, it is becoming increasingly risky. America has stayed out of our affairs thus far, but surely this will not last. Eventually, something will spark the ire of this sleeping giant. So, it is imperative that it never awaken, and for that we have devised a cunning plan one in which you will all be taking a part in. He hobbled a little, his eyes moving around the room. They rested on Troy a second, who held his breath in anxious anticipation until his gaze move on. Your instructions the last two months were to help unload shipments and cargo aboard the U-boat's docking. You were not informed of the contents or their nature, but now it's time for you to be allowed to know. Herr Hostetter? Oscar stepped up with a large rolling paper. He unrolled it for all to see, and an intake of air made the room tension feel almost palpable. It was a diagram of a cylindrical device, with instructions all over written in German. A bomb, Oscar explained. An explosive device filled to the brim with a concoction that our brothers in the fatherland have kindly donated to us. What concoction? one brave soul asked. It's a gas, called Zyklon B. 
America has not seen a gas of this make yet, and will have no idea how to combat it immediately, Oscar announced proudly. We have been using this same formula on some of the undesirables in our blessed homeland, Kruger continued with a smirk. The results are highly satisfactory in closed-off environments. Therefore, we shall be planting all five of the bombs in specific locations around the city. The death toll will be astronomical. But to what end? Troy finally spoke. Many eyes turned to face him, surprised. Troy quickly tried to recover. I mean, we kill a handful of Americans, but that doesn't do anything to help, right? They'll just get angry and decide to retaliate. Which is why, Kruger answered slowly and with a distasteful spit, we do not detonate all the bombs just yet. We detonate one or two first, allow the people to choke on the price of their insolence, and then we inform the American government of the three other bombs. We will detonate them as well if their country even considers entering the conflict with the fatherland, and if they try to search for the bombs, we will detonate one more as a warning. We also can't reveal how many bombs there are, Oscar added, if we admit only five bombs were given to us. It will seem less threatening. The number must be kept safe. As the murmurs of uncertainty mixed with the shouts of glee and excitement, Troy began slipping a few steps back. He had to get out now. He had his information. He had more than enough. He had to warn someone, anyone. Then he'd start hunting for the first bomb. The first target we'll be looking at, he went on, causing Troy to freeze momentarily, will be the central train station. High traffic volume there. Plus, plenty of witnesses. There were a few laughs from the crowd, but Kruger's eyes kept skimming the crowd with a glare of pure loathing. Troy turned and started to slip away. But there is one more thing to consider, Kruger spoke up again. Troy didn't stop this time, though. The situation was too dire. He made his way quickly towards the door where two men were standing by. I believe that it is necessary you all be informed. But a few of our comrades, including an aide to the ambassador have met gruesome ends at the end of a most irritating thorn in our boot. Troy saw the two men suddenly move in front of the door, blocking his way with cold glares. The color in Troy's face drained noticeably. It would be quite the bother if that thorn were to learn about what we've discovered, wouldn't it? Troy didn't wait. He couldn't re- He reached into his jack pocket and yanked out his gun, firing off two shots at point-blank range into the men at the door. The room erupted into roars of rage and surprise. Troy rolled behind a table, kicking the leg out from under it so he could knock it on its side and use it as cover. Guns began firing off and Troy returned fire, cursing under his breath. Of course they knew he was here, but how long had they known? It only made sense that Kruger had picked him out of the crowd after a few moments. Hadn't the aide to the Ambassador Hossetcher known quite a bit about him? The Nazis had done their homework on him. They likely knew his face. He could fool these small-time grunts, but not the head. In fact, come to think of it, Oscar, the man he'd spoken to when he'd been mingling. His surname was Hotstetter. Damn it all, he knew the moment he saw me, Troy gasped. That bastard was related. He fired off a few more shots and heard a grunt hit the ground screaming. He paused to reload his bullets rebounded off the wooden and thick table. He was pinned and with no way out. You won't get out alive, one voice shouted, using the sound to pinpoint the voice. Troy took aim without looking and fired. To his delight, the voice let out a cry. But the joy was short-lived, as suddenly a burly figure charged Troy from behind and tackled him, wrestling him for the gun. It was Oscar Hostetter. Give me the gun, Oscar hissed. Just lay down and die already! The two struggled and Oscar swung a few hard hits into Troy's cheek, but just as he was raising back for another, Troy shot his elbow up and caught Oscar off for him. The two rolled over and Troy threw himself behind Oscar, turning his gun to fire at the Nazi sympathizers who took advantage of the confusion to move up. He unloaded his clip, causing them all to fall back, but no sooner had he done this than Oscar was back up and kicking. He kicked Troy in the jaw, knocking him backwards. Oscar smirked and rushed, grabbing the fallen gun that Troy had dropped, picking it up and aiming it at him. You killed my uncle, you son of a bitch, Oscar hissed. Troy glared at the gun and then raised his hand slowly. That's right. On your feet. Troy climbed back up, nursing his wounded jaws. Oscar held the gun to his head. Every man in the room had their weapon trained on Troy, waiting, waiting for the moment to end. Troy kept his hands up, looking at Oscar and his own gun aimed at him. 
I want you to look me in the eyes. I pay you back. Stop wasting time, boy! Kruger shouted from the stage. He'd never left, perfectly content to watch the action with a view. Just how tough was that old buzzard? Kill him! Before you do, Troy has quickly keeping his hands up. I need to tell you about your uncle. What's about him? Oscar asked, walking closer and putting the barrel of the gun right against Troy's forehead so he could feel the warm steel. Troy felt it, sighing slowly and analyzing every move he'd made, every bullet he'd ever fired, every decision in his life. Everything kept going back to Elizabeth, and he smiled. She'd kill him if these guys didn't, but it'd be worth it. I said, what about him? Oscar roared. Your uncle and you had a lot in common, Troy finally admitted. He moved ever so slightly forward so the gun was now pressed into his skin enough to hurt. Oscar sneered, but Troy just smiled back. You both died like goddamn dogs. Furious, Oscar pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. What? Troy acted immediately, striking Oscar across the face and then rushing behind him, using his arm to twist Oscar around. He yanked himself behind Oscar and held him with a chokehold, just as every gun in the room fired right where he'd been standing. Using Oscar as his human shield, Troy winced and gasped as a few bullets passed right through his body shield and into his own body. The stinging pain of at least three bullets roared through him and he collapsed with Oscar's shocked, bloody face on top of him. He lay there as the lights began to fade and darkness was creeping in. There was more shouting, the smell of gun smoke and booze. There was screaming, shouts, and Troy was beginning to feel himself slipping beyond its reach. How had he known that his gun was empty? How had he been so sure that it was going to click? Because he'd been counting the bullets. Now as he lay bleeding out and fading away, his eyes kept seeing Elizabeth smiling at him holding him. They say before you die you see a glimpse of heaven before you pass on. If that's true, then Troy was reaching out to his angel to hurry up and kiss him, while he still had a few breaths left to lose. <laughs>